Hello, Toronto. Good afternoon, um, and welcome to the first of series of um, of webinars about rental market in Toronto. Today, we are going to talk about the changes in supply, demand, and tenant behavior during um, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. On the bottom of your screen, uh, you will see Q&A symbol. So if you have any burning questions, type them there. And at the end of our webinar, we will answer as many as we're able. So let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Vera Sal. I'm a head of property management division. I've been in the real estate industry uh, since 2006, and I joined uh, Rented Furnished in 2012. Here with me today is Erin Carlson, our Hi, Erin. <laughs> our senior leasing agent. Erin um, joined Rented Furnished in 2016, and previous to joining, Erin um, was a licensed realtor in Ottawa. Erin has a passion for real estate and providing exceptional customer service to her clients, as you might aware. <laughs> um, so, Erin, uh, what are some of the most common questions you are getting from homeowners since the beginning of the pandemic? Uh, thanks, Farah. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the three most common concerns for landlords these days have been around uh, demand. So who is still traveling and what type of properties are they interested in? Uh, price, how has the pandemic affected the rental prices in Toronto? Have they dropped? And if so, by how much? And third would be tenancy. How can I secure the right tenant right now in this market? Well, okay, so uh, let's talk first about what tenants are looking for in the rental. Yeah, previous to COVID, the demand was really focused on high rise condos. People really liked the use of amenities. So gyms, pools, outdoor rooftop patios. Uh, parking wasn't really that necessary as most people would use either public transportation or they would be close enough to walk to work. Um, the need for outdoor space is also more of a nice to have versus a must have. Okay, and uh, what are you seeing now that we're mostly forced to be at home? Yeah, definitely. There's a high demand for family, like single family homes, townhouses and duplexes. Um, people are looking for yards or exclusive use of any outdoor space. They don't really want to be sharing an elevator or any common areas. If they are in a condo, then they require to have a balcony or some outdoor space should they suffer like an isolation or quarantine. Uh, more people are also choosing to drive over the use of public transportation and therefore properties that have parking included are in a higher demand. Most companies have also shifted to the work from home lifestyle. So the demand right now um, has shifted. So people are more interested in larger, larger indoor spaces or properties that offer work areas versus close proximity to the office as they may no longer be needing to commute. Mm -hmm. That's great, Erin. That's interesting. So you mentioned uh, next one was the price. So how have the rental rates been affected? Yeah, real estate has always been determined by supply and demand. So when the demand is high and the supply is low, prices go up. But when the demand is low and the price of the supply is high, the prices go down. So right now the demand is low, less people are moving around. So prices have really dropped about 15 to 30%. The most heavily affected have been condos or those studios or anything without balconies. Whereas houses are seeing a little bit less of that effect um, because they're in higher demand. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So um, can you um, explain a little bit more uh, what kind of clients um, did you have pre-COVID and what is happening right now? Yeah, so pre-COVID, we had a lot more international. So we would have international leisure, executive corporate travel, international students, and a lot of non-essential travel, especially in the summer. Um, right now, the type of people are, who are traveling are still international. We're getting some essential travel. A lot of people still in film and TV, they're starting to produce more TV and shows up here in Canada. Um, and also a lot of people who are wanting to be close to um, their family. So if somebody has dual citizenship, we are finding that they are coming back. We also continue to have the domestic travel. So corporate relocations, people who are experiencing divorces or separations. Um, there's a lot of extensive home renovations going on right now. So sometimes they need another uh, property for that. 
owners who have sold their home and are waiting for the next property. We're starting to see a lot of that as well. And insurance claims. So people who have been affected by fire or flood. Mm -hmm. Why well, see pretty similar trends here in Vancouver too. Okay, so you mentioned um, with um, low demand and high supply. So what can owners do to make sure that the property stands out on the market like this? Yeah, absolutely. So there's three key factors. Um, that we always like to say is pictures, price, and terms. So pictures, um, make sure that the presentation is right. right? Take, the the, take the pictures when the property is staged and between tenancies. We do also recommend hiring a professional photographer. There are some in the city that range from about $100 to $115. It's always an excellent investment to make your property stand out. Right now, we're also using a lot of videos. So I'm taking uh, videos of the properties when I visit them. Um, we're posting those on our website as well. It's been extremely helpful when securing tenants who are not here to view the property um, in person. So some staging tips would be like have neutral colors throughout, you know, no big bold colors. It, it doesn't really speak to a large amount of people. Keep white bed linens, duvet covers, keep it very, um, people think it's easier to clean and that they think hotel, they think sterile. Remove any knickknacks and small personal items when you are getting those photos taken as well. Ensure that all the lights are on, the blinds are open, and you're taking them during the day. Um, the second thing would be the price. So obviously, reduce right now as much as possible. Try not to look for profit, more to just avoid vacancy. And the last would be terms. Be flexible. If you can entertain shorter term tenancies, now's the time to do it. It's actually a benefit right now as we can adjust to current market rates once those people leave. Remember right now it's a really uncertain time so people don't know what their future looks like and allowing for shorter terms will only increase the ability for us to rent it out for the right person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Yeah, there is a lot of uncertainty and people moving from place to place, but unfortunately they don't know what happens with the income. Are they going to hold that job tomorrow or I don't know, their visa is not going to be renewed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I'm finding wow. too is sometimes when people are doing sight unseen, what it's really great is that they'll rent for one to three months, not wanting to commit for too long, get a feel for the property. Once they're in, they're very likely to extend. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for this insight. <laughs> yeah, so thank you, Vera. Um, it's, also, it's, it's very important to attract the right tenant, but then it's also really important to assess fit. So can you tell me a little bit about what you're looking for in terms of fit with a tenant? Well, there are two major factors and uh, two major aspects that we're looking for in a good application and a good applicants. Their ability to pay rent and take good care of your property. Oh, yeah. yeah. What are some of the screening measures that you're taking now since the pandemic? Well, we definitely have seen how different industries have been differently affected during the pandemic hospitality, retail, film industry, as you mentioned, and travel being hit the hardest. So if you deal with clients, uh, with applicants, uh, with less stable employment, I strongly suggest securing a guarantor or ensuring that the applicant is not solely dependent on their paycheck. Well, for example, their spouse has um, employment income or they have savings, investments, or draw dividends from elsewhere. Screening process for all our managed properties uh, have always been very thorough and uh, more important than ever now is to include uh, mandatory credit and history reports. They provide very good visibility into the financial situation of, of an applicant and the fiscal standing and um, into their previous um, renting history. If you are a TP owner, you also can request such kind of report uh, from us for a small fee. I strongly recommend using that option. Oh, great. Thanks, Vera. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the challenges that you've seen? Well, uh, first and the most important, of course, would be inability to pay rent. Um, very small percentage of our tenants lost their main income due to being employed in those vulnerable, vulnerable industries. 
So we offer them deferred rent plans that allow them uh, to have shelter, essential accommodation, and then pay the, those old amounts uh, later on when their financial situation is more stable. The other uh, challenge we've been facing is uh, breaking leases due to family separation. You mentioned that before to or needing a larger sp space since now people spend more time indoors and work from home. And of course, like if someone was in, one, in a one bedroom apartment, now it might not work for a couple who work full time from home because they need two separate spaces for their workstations. And um, last one I need to mention uh, would be emergency repairs. Tenants understandably apprehensive to let trades or strangers into their homes. We assure them uh, that all of our trades are following COVID protocols and we only conduct absolutely necessary repairs that cannot be postponed until the pandemic situation improves. Oh yeah, that's quite interesting. Now, have you also noticed that there's been more tenant calls regarding deficiencies in their units? Yes, absolutely. Uh, tenants spend more time at home. They started noticing that uh, some Latin defects previously were not bothering them, and now it became more prominent. Of course, more wear and tear. When people used to just go home and sleep for a few hours and go back to work or go out, they wouldn't spend that much time at home. Now we're pretty much locked in 24 seven. Our trades are very, very busy uh, repairing all those small and larger deficiencies. Cool. Um, now Vera, if you had one piece of advice, what would it be? <laughs> Well, I actually have three pieces of advice. <laughs> First of all, be proactive. Open a conversation. See if your tenant can comfortably pay rent in these challenging uh, times. Uh, deferred rent agreements or reduced uh, rent agreements are a great help to carry over to a more stable economy and help the tenant to have that accommodation and for you to have the tenant that still pays rent. Create redundancies uh, in trades, in contacts for move in and move outs, for emergency handling. Ask yourself a question. What am I going to do if I'm sick or I have to care for my loved one or for my relative one who has to self-isolate? Um, do I have additional contacts for repairs if my usual trades person suddenly needs to self-isolate or they're overwhelmed by volume of work they need to perform right now. Uh, be respectful. While living through the unprecedented times and everyone is navigating those times very differently. If you have to show your occupied property to a prospect, try doing it via FaceTime or ensure that your current tenant that the condo will be professionally cleaned after you did that showing in person or better yet take a video in advance and show it to your prospect you mentioned that um, as a part of the presentation now videos are very very important in fact uh condos are uh, rent 69 percent faster um, with those listings that have videos attached to that and um, the other uh, piece of advice or kind of a remark, if the tenant needs to self-isolate and refuse entry for the showing in person, please don't ask them for that medical record. It's still private personal information. Just trust your tenant. I, I think they have a valid reason not to allow entry. And uh, the last piece of advice would be be informed. Changes in tenancy regulations have been happening very uh, often in the past year. A good source of information will be Landlord, landlord Self-Help Center, uh, the usual Landlord and Tenant Board, and of course, our full uh, property management services. 
If you feel overwhelmed, if you feel that you cannot carry that burden that now became more noticeable during the pandemic, we have senior property managers that are very well versed with all the regulations, have been keeping abreast with all the changes, and will definitely be able to help you uh, navigate all the new and old uh, regulations in tenancies. Amazing. Well, thanks, Farah. That's been very helpful. <laughs> well, thanks, Erin. Um, it's 1020. I think uh, that's all what we have for today. Now, uh, let's move to Q&A session. Um, as I mentioned, on the bottom of your screen, um, you can ask your questions by clicking on a Q&A uh, tab. Okay, let me just have a quick look. Okay, so uh, we have um, a question. Um, I think I will be the best person to answer that. Is COVID a valid reason to break a lease? No, unfortunately, COVID or um, majority of medical emergencies or medical situations are not the valid reason to break a lease. Of course, if you feel compassion towards your tenant, you can strike a deal. But the short answer, no, there is no such kind of provision in all or new regulations about tenant being released from their obligations just mm. because they have an illness. OK, so um, the other question I have, I think it's property management related too. How move-ins handled if the tenant arriving from abroad and needs to self-isolate? Well, yes, of course, uh, now everyone needs to follow 14-day quarantine regulations. What we do, we do remote check-in. First of all, the keys. The keys we usually leave either with the concierge or if it's a house, uh, there are electronic lock boxes, so tenant will be able to gain access in the apartment, we will leave them with a welcome package that has all the information that they need. Most important being emergency numbers and Wi-Fi passwords, because they will be sitting at home for two weeks. So they definitely need uh, to have internet access. Um, we also prepare a uh, moving uh, condition inspection report in advance and send it electronically. There are so many tools right now and technology that allows us to do remote check-ins. All the do uh, documents signed electronically, we can do a uh, walkthrough by uh, FaceTime or Zoom or whatever you feel like. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a great help uh, in um, dealing with, uh, with movements during the pandemic. Okay, I think, um, I hope it answers your question. Erin, um, is there anything that um, you would like to address? Uh, no, I think I've covered everything. Um, I think just really making a focus on pricing, right? Always make sure that you're priced close to your competitors, just maybe $50, $100 less. It really does help the leasing team to find a tenant for you. So we'll have people with specific parameters, but if we know that, you know, your property is priced well, we'll definitely try to fill it. Um, I know sometimes owners message me and they say like, listen, I'm open to negotiations. Just bring me someone. That's not really the right way to approach it just because what ends up happening happening is you're eliminating the inquiries from all the people who are using just the website to search. Um, whereas I may know you're open to nego negotiations, maybe my colleagues don't. So it's really only informative for me. Um, you know, if you price it at the good price on the website, then you're attracting, you know, our clients from all the different agents, as well as you're in their search when they when they adjust their search, your your property will come in. So definitely try to always be priced well in the market. And if you have any questions around parking, um, pricing of your property, definitely just uh, reach out to me and I'm happy to kind of give you what today's market rates are, are right now. Oh, um, thank you, Erin. And actually just another question came in. What is the going rate for one bedroom plus parking for downtown um, 
Corona right now? I know it's a very broad question. Yeah, I get that question. And I always say like, I need to see the unit. So if you have pictures, you can send them to me. If you have a video, please send it to me. Um, there's a couple ways we work around it. One is we look at what the rental rates would be in your building if you are in a condo high rise <clears throat> and then assess based on the furnishings and the utilities to be added as a, as a added into the price. Furniture ranges from anything from very, <clears throat> very minimal placement of like Ikea furniture all the way up to super high end designer furniture. So wide range. And I can definitely give you an idea of exactly your property, your building and everything if you want to reach out to me after. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Erin. So I think we will be wrapping it up. Uh, we will uh, send the recording and presentation of this webinar uh, to all uh, who attended today. If you have any additional questions on your screen, you can see our contact details. We're always available to address all your concerns and um, any other issues you might have. So thank you so much uh, for attending and have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.